on giving the great music, you know. And if you're just joining us, you're locked into Diaspora Connection featuring Kabbalah for Jamaicans, you know what I mean? And we also have the Vita, you know. It's the real estate segment coming up in about nine minutes. Yeah. This is a project, this is more than a song. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Just want to big up all the Kabbalah students locked in, you know? Me, Empress like Patrice over there in Mandeville. Williamsfield to be exact. Just big up yourself, all right? You know, we just gotta give thanks and praises, you know what I mean? And being the first day of the week, we have to start it off like this, you know what I mean? That's why I like Sunday, because, you know, it's the foundation of the week, so we have to start it right. Welcome to the city where the streets are golden. People put material things before them. Price that one woman like them in a store. And some are not even know themselves. Let me drop this one for the ladies. Especially, you know. We have the cast of it, one disaster. This a fire we are burned, can't cool with water. Now go falter. I've got to give my heart to Jaja. There is no profit in gain in the world. Yo, this is a girl, Sheree, representing from a bread train. I am Simba. Yeah, man, I want to see the ladies, them just take it up and just start, you know. Remember the most, you know what I mean? Whether you go to church or you don't go to church. Just remember to just keep it real, you know what I mean? Cause and effect, you know? Just do the right, the good and good follow, all right? In the meantime, this is Sugar from Outer Montego Bay. Welcome to the city where the streets are golden. People put material things before them. Price the pan woman like them in a store. And some are not even know themselves no more. And up on it in the whole world after. We have the cause of it, one disaster. This a fire we are burned, can't cool with water. Talking to the ladies, all right? 
Gifted, get so twisted, you know? So enough. I care, you know? Hey, Joshua. Just gotta pick up Joshua over there in New York, you know? Joshua, are you there? Not so clearly, <laughs> all right? <laughs> Here I am. All right, good. Engineer. Everything all right over there? Yes, now? man. Everything is better now. Thank God. Thank all right. God. You sound clearer, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you look clearer. It, it helps. The mi eh? You look clearer everything, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, you know, not the studio now, and you know, you can't see the full, the full 100. <laughs> and you look happier. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, we just uh, play two songs, you know, just uh, inspire the female. Them because a lot of female ask them way, you know, you know what I say? Because of <laughs> needs and wants and them things there, you know? Listen, <sighs> listen, I won't allow you two to jump on women, you know, what do you mean? You two? Me never say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but me say lose them way. I mean, I song me I listen, you know, you know no female go in a relationship these days because of the, the finance that can come from it, you know? Mm. So, no matter if it's a bad man, it don't matter if he's a much, much older man. Mm -hmm. It just, you know, it don't matter. You know, it don't matter if somebody else's husband <laughs> or somebody else's boyfriend and them things. But them things are not really right still, you know? Well, so that's what I mean when I say lose them. Way, you, you know, you, you mm -hmm. know something, Shimba? We're not here to judge, you know? We are all being given free will. Right? And all you can really say is that that's not right for you. Because you cannot, you don't know another person's situation. And people do things for all different type of reasons, right? You know, the Torah tells you that, look, stealing is a crime, right? And if a person steal, then get them hand chopped off. But if you're stealing because you're hungry and to feed your family, then that is not an offense, according to the Torah. You understand? So we have to be very careful. People have reasons for what they do, what they do. You never hear me say why right or wrong because in the grand scheme of things we don't know the big picture a person's individual action okay specifically may not be the best thing that for that person right and for continuity but again you know we have to be very careful very careful well i don't know you know one thing about me learn about kabbalah is cause and effect you know that's like my thing. Because me, Everybody you know, responsible. Me not yeah. really, me not really yeah. like to try to have everything. That's why we don't have brain, to judge. You know. me just, that's why we don't do, have to. Me do, me just try to call the most effective things. Yep. You know, and that's why yep. you know even you know Jesus, yes, Yeshua. You know, people say <laughs> sure. Jesus. You know, he. Yeah. You know, they have they have many commandments, but him just him says something about love. You know what I mean? You know, like w like love thy neighbor as thyself. You know. And, him and say, then when you do he that, he who is without sin, make him cast the first stone. So when you do that, now you find so you just reach at a point where you can get everything right, you know. So for me, still, yeah. me just I say, and me just you know, for me, me just did some things I'm gonna do. I don't even know if it's gonna become a bad thing for me, seeing. But me do it yeah. anyway because I know I have to do it, yeah. Yeah. And more than yeah. just said yeah. to people, there's cause and effect, so. Absolutely. Just do good. Exactly. And, uh, good, and good will follow you. Follow you. Exactly. Know, sometimes, you, know, you might That's in right. a need for something. Absolutely. And you, boom, and you do the wrong thing. And for a minute, or for a day, or for a week, or for a year, it feels good. But it come back around on you. You know what I mean? And yeah. becomes really yeah. bad. You understand? Yeah. So we just yeah, yeah, say, yeah. 
just do the right thing. It's not even right judging thing. or anything. Right I'm right. just do saying, right. all right? Do the right. Good. So, good, 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 good. You know, I just, it's just like that, man. So it's all, it's all good, yep. Joshua. And, um, yeah, man. Yeah, <laughs> we should have Joseph come online in a little while, too. Yeah, man. So it's a good vibration. Joseph, is he... Is he anywhere near? Yes, so so Joseph is um, with us. But before that, let me just talk to you a little about him, you know, about his experience, so that mm -hmm. the people know so we, we're hearing from somebody that know the thing, you understand? Because it's always good, as as, as um, Joshua always say, you know, when you, when you know somebody that, you know, know things, it makes more sense than, you know, somebody who doesn't know the business. So Joseph Patterson, is um the co one of the co the owners and the broker of allied real estate you know from the beginning i have always been representing allied real estate company mm -hmm. um joseph's proven performance is based on 30 years experience both in residential and commercial real estate um attention to detail and creative thinking our core competencies required to be successful in a dynamic real estate environment integrity professionalism knowledge and commitment to his clients has established enduring relationships in and out of the office um as i said before he has over 30 years experience and he has education both in business administration and it so what he has done is that he has collected all of his love his love for business his love for it and his love for entrepreneurship and real estate and has really created what i would see is a legacy so he mm. married all his passions his it with 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 real estate and has proven to be a satisfying endeavor um joseph uses his technical background and project management experience to ensure the successful launch and completion of a number of subdivision projects so he specializes mm. in subdivisions, you know. You know, that means like cutting up land. So making mm -hmm. sure if you have a big plot of land, what he does is that mm -hmm. make sure that, you know, he can assign each plot mm -hmm. of land mm -hmm. to a person mm -hmm. and then it just mm -hmm. being a whole. So that's mm -hmm. his specialization. So he'll be talking to us today about real estate, real estate back then and real mm -hmm. estate now. And also, as I said before, giving advice to persons who are new in the game, persons who are just looking for their first property and things that they'd want to, you mm -hmm. know, know about real estate. Um, Joseph, are you here with us? I am, and thank you very much for that <laughs> wonderful introduction. No problem. Uh, How are you doing? I'm doing very well. Uh, Sunday hi. here, and uh, it's sunny. It's bright and sunny. Okay. We're about uh, seven degrees. Uh, <laughs> I should day. mention to the listeners that Joseph is actually calling in from Canada. So where he okay, is yeah. right now is very cold. <laughs> but Although I'm... seven degrees is quite warm this time. Oh, it's here. warm. Okay. So it's some, um, well, that's still some cold to me, you know, Joseph, to tell you the truth. But if it's warm to you, no problem. <laughs> no problem. Um, is Joseph, Joseph, are you a Jamaican? Well... My family. Will you put the man on the spot. Uh, <laughs> no, no man, I thought that would be easy. Oh, no, no, well, no. <laughs> and maybe yes. My family is Jamaican, um, but we moved from Jamaica to the Bahamas and then to Canada. But I've always had ties to Jamaica, as I frequent there quite often. You know, for the last, I want to say, ten years. You are um, just here February, to Joseph, right? We come. To, I'm sorry. You are just here as well. You are I'm just sorry, in Jamaica. Yes, I, I, I was, actually. I just left uh, a week ago. Yeah, yeah. Your mother's Jamaican, right? Mother and father are both Jamaican, yes. Then you're Jamaican. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Joseph. As, yes, ma'am. Right. As, uh, as, as my business partner, Sid Morgan, um, you know, the managing director at uh, Allied Real Estate would say, yeah, man, we are family. <laughs> See there? That's it. Yeah, the accent. No. So, <laughs> yeah, so Joseph, you know, um, you know, Davita really gave an amazing introduction and it was very intriguing to me because I too come from an IT background. Wonderful. So, so when I hear you say that, then, you know, I'm interested in seeing how you're utilizing technology, right, to assist um, consumers in, in their real estate endeavors. So, Tell us, tell us more about what you do. Well, especially in uh, 
this climate, you know, the, the digital and information age, IT plays a key role in how real estate transactions are done today. Um, not just locally, but also internationally, you know, with the assistance of IDS and Nordia over at uh, Integrated Diaspora Services, we're able to communicate and connect with the diaspora abroad, as well as do transactions locally from one parish to the other, and we do it digitally. You know, most of our offers or most of the properties uh, we have are on the MLS system. Mm -hmm. And with it being on the MLS system, it, it makes it easier for someone to view properties. With Allied and Allied Media, we do a wonderful thing with our virtual tours, our drone shots, our virtual mm. open houses, things of nice. that nature, just actually employing all areas of technology to bring the home to the, the buyer and or the seller, and also right. represents our services of, of what we provide at Allied. You know, in the past, if you want to see a property, you actually have to drive there, go there. Now you can see mm -hmm. it on the internet or on any of our social media platforms. To do offers now, um, we can send it to you by email, digital signatures are done, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. most transactions can be completed electronically. Okay. So the marrying of uh, technology and real estate has really helped us to gain a lot of efficiencies in the industry. Awesome, awesome, cool. Yeah. So I understand that you are an expert in subdivision. Well, yes, I kind of cut my teeth in, in subdivisions. Um, you know, looking at, looking at raw land, understanding, you know, the grade, understanding the site um, and how you divide land. And, you know, are you looking at estate mm -hmm. homes? Are you looking at a gated community? Are you looking mm -hmm. at townhomes? You know, mm -hmm. just the various aspects of, of development, what kind of infrastructure is required to do this Absolutely. development, uh, you know, and also looking at the business side of it. What's the price point we're looking at? Who's our target market? Right. What's right. going to be the absorption rate? Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't make sense to build 400 homes in the middle of a swamp where there's no access and right. uh, you're building homes that nobody wants. So right. it's understanding right. the full soup to nuts of who the, who the homes are for and how do we get them there? Yeah. And at what price point? Mm -hmm. So true. So um, before we even go further, um, Joe, I don't know if you could tell the listeners, you know, how did you end up in real estate? Because having this wealth of knowledge, you know, comes with a bit of experience. So how did you end up in real estate? As I see here 30 years ago, what happened that led you to real estate? Well, what happened in real estate, um, or what caused me to enter real estate was a friend introduced me to real estate while I was doing IT. And I like the idea of working my own hours. I like the idea of being my own boss. I also like the idea Amen to that. <laughs> of instant gratification. You actually can see the elation of someone who wants to buy a home. And when they finally accomplish that dream, mm -hmm. you know, it gives you some kind of satisfaction or it gives me satisfaction to see that, you know what, I've helped someone and I've helped a family. And the relationships, uh, it, it's not so much about the deal or the compensation, even though the compensation is important because we all want to be paid for what we do. Mm -hmm. But it's also the satisfaction of knowing that you've built a relationship with a family, you build a relationship with a community, and that relationship comes back tenfold, you know, because if you sell to the brother, the sister says, well, you know what, I want, let's use Allied, let's use Joseph to do it. And when I got involved in real estate uh, here in North America, it was, it was pretty easy. It was a great market. You know, uh, I finished my real estate course and the next day I did my first transaction. <laughs> wow. And, you know, I was How many people are that lucky? I said, wow, this is good. How you many know? people are that lucky? Yeah, well... Luck, well, luck, the environment, the climate, uh, everything, all the stars aligned, and you know it was uh, it was a wonderful thing. Indeed, because real estate is a is a tough market, especially when you're starting out. Um, but once you you know you cut your teeth on a few things, and yeah, because my son is a is a broker, I know other brokers as well. Matter of fact, he just right. came from Jamaica, sitting for his uh, broker license in Jamaica. So, you know, wishing the best in there because I have some business where I'm wanted down there. So, 
Mm -hmm. So can, maybe you can link absolutely. him up with you and you can, I'm sure he would have a ton of questions for you. Yeah, it's a, it's a very difficult field, but um, mm -hmm. Joseph is really doing well. Um, Good. So Joseph, when you just started out in real estate, mm -hmm. what were some of the challenges that you saw a lot of persons going through when it came on to acquiring a home? Well, acquiring a home, it takes a lot. It um, does. You know, 30 years ago, you have to understand uh, what, what your income is, uh, what financing is available to you. How do you go about acquiring a home? You know, uh, and if you didn't have the expertise, you could pr pretty much uh, run yourself into problems. I believe the last show I listened to, you shared your experience mm -hmm. when you uh, tried to acquire your first home mm -hmm. and the challenges you had. Well, that those challenges are international, you know, um, but with the right team, not just a person, but a right team, um, the real estate transaction as a whole can be simplified, can be efficient, and it, it, it can be done in, in a way that it's a it's an enjoyable experience. You yeah. know, if you have the right agent, the right lawyer, the right accountant, mm -hmm. um, and the right support staff, you know, um, you can accomplish the purchase or the selling of a home quite easily and effectively. But uh, there are challenges with interest rates, mortgages. Do you qualify? Do you not qualify? Mm -hmm. You know, where do you where do you want to live? There are so many challenges, and if you gain the understanding of that then it, it's easier the the process you know from contract to close becomes mm -hmm. easier mm -hmm. we were even saying in a previous show that um, a lot of persons don't know especially if you're going through the mortgage road that you have to ensure that you get pre-qualified you know you have to ensure that the bank will support you it makes no sense you go out in the market and you say listen I need to buy a home and you start looking at a 50 million dollar home when you can only afford a 25 million dollar home you know so it's all about you know setting realistic um goals and making sure that um you, you get what you set out for you know um joseph uh i want to I want to ask you, and I'm not sure if you can go in detail for our listeners because our listeners really want to know how the real estate market is. So can you just tell us some of the changes that you're seeing reflected in the real estate market right now? Because, you know, a lot of persons, they're looking, um, they're looking in, but they're not really understanding what is happening. So what are some of the changes that you're seeing now that are happening, that is happening in the market? Not necessarily in Jamaica alone, but, you know, universal. What is happening? Well... In the market, you know, if I can address the local market in Jamaica mm -hmm. right now, you'll see that uh, with NHT and the increase of the NHT benefit, um, you'll see that the the highway, um, it's actually opening up more markets, you know, uh, traveling from Kingston to Mandeville, you know, can take you up to two hours, mm -hmm. you know, but as the highways open up, and as lands start to develop, because there's some wonderful developments taking place in Mandeville right now. Yeah. And uh, those developments and the affordability of those homes, it, it, that's going to be a burgeoning market that people should look to, mm -hmm. you know, um, the ability to actually see the property or see the land. You know, um, one of the things I did notice uh, as I moved across to the, the Jamaica market is that you, you see that um the the culture has changed you it know has. from from my frequent visits to jamaica i see that the culture is a build culture where somebody says well boy i'm not gonna buy a little piece of land and i'm gonna build something you know mm -hmm. now it's kind of changed to and i hope you appreciated my jamaican accent there, <laughs> loving but, it uh, loving it <laughs> now the culture is kind of shifted towards well why do i want to buy why do I want to buy a piece of land and go through the work? Why not buy a home? That's true. If I can afford it. That's true. Right? Mm -hmm. So that cultural shift is a big thing for markets. And it's also a big thing for developers because now developers are saying, well, I'm not just going to do a subdivision and, and just sell the lots. Mm -hmm. I want to build a subdivision and I'm going to build homes. Right? And people are looking at it and saying, well, yeah, I can buy this nice home. It's ready. I can move in. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't have to be forever building and you know, be dependent on the supply chain, mm -hmm. you know, how much does steel cost, concrete, mall, you know, uh, how do I get the services up to my lot? What about, what am I do about water and all them kind of things? 
And I don't know why I'm slipping into this Jamaican accent. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. I, I appreciate it. But as you said, as, as you said, you know, it makes it easier. I think that is the word. The process is so much easier when I'm buying a home, you know, rather than buying a lot. Because, yes, when you have a lot, you can personalize it and you can put the bathroom there or you can put it wherever. But when you're investing in a home, it feels... Like a finished product, you know, all they have to do is move in the furniture. You don't have to think about the little mason man where you have to go pay this money and pay the plumber this money and pay whatever. All of that is done for you already. So, yes, the market is changing to really reflect persons more interested in, you know, in, in investing in a home rather than investing in a plot of land. Yeah. So I've seen yes. that change as well. And internationally, well, first I want to say, you know, with the allied team, we make that possible, you know, with the, our allied real estate office, our, our allied mortgage, our in-house mortgage and pre-qualification, mm -hmm. our in-house lawyers that help walk you through the process, you know, our media that actually shows you concepts of what the new homes will look like, you know, so we offer, we offer a full gamut of services to ensure that you know what, if you're buying locally and if you're buying out of parish, mm -hmm. we make that easier for you, that we make the transition easier so that, you know, it's level setting the expectation of the buyer so that they know, hey, you know what, this is what I've contracted for and this is what I'm going to get. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it says so right here in the contract. Mm -hmm. Now, if I could stick a pin in that for a second and address the diaspora, you know, with the diaspora, and uh, Nordia from uh, IDS, our Integrated Diaspora Services, what we found, like the first generation um, Jamaicans who have been left property in Jamaica, and they don't know anything about it. They're like, why? You know, my granny, she did leave me two pieces of land <laughs> up, so, And if you go down by the, go down by the first yellow house, I and then right. you pass the one there, <laughs> and you see the tree, you make a left, and so I just the lot. Yeah. Well, what does that mean? You know, it, they have no connection. No connection to, whatsoever. You know, the, the land. So with Nordia and IDS, she can say, well, you know what? Tell me, show, show me your, your, your grandmother's birth certificate, mm -hmm. you know, or where you think it's located. We'll find the land for you, mm -hmm. right? And then times, and then they'll, they'll move to, well, we found the land, but we want to sell it because we don't want to have that land. What we'd rather do is just buy something here. Well, you really can't sell it unless you have a TRN number. Mm -hmm. Well, let's have Nordia look after that. Mm -hmm. Let's mm -hmm. get the, the land titles. We have a land title specialist in our office. So we'll find you the land title. You know, we'll have our legal services address, you know, the caveats on title, if the mm -hmm. land is captured or if it's not captured. Exactly. So <laughs> you put all these things together and then, you know, the North American market is saying, well, you know what? We miss Jamaica. Mm -hmm. We want to know where we come from. Mm -hmm. You know, how do we buy a property in Jamaica and where would we want to live? Mm -hmm. In the past, it was about moving back to Jamaica and be like big old son, everything. And, and, and that doesn't make more sense that, again. That's true. <laughs> why, why am I, why am I going to live in a, a 5,000 square foot house and by myself, you mm -hmm. know, because the family comes down and say, oh, it's all well and good, but we want to be on the North coast where the action is. We mm -hmm. want to be, we just want to have a gated community, a nice house where we can move, bring people down, bring our family down and enjoy it. So the market has changed. Development has changed. Um, the market is going to, is going to be, the growth is going to be exponential. So true. The returning residents, the sun worshipers, you know, so I have true. a lot of American friends. Who aren't even Jamaican, mm -hmm. but you'd swear blind if you talk to them on the phone that you're talking to somebody who come from a yard with them dirty pot water. So true. I yeah. remember even one of your clients, I believe they have a property down by Richmond. Remember one of your clients, I think, uh, yeah, recently bought a, a property in Richmond, which is, you know, an up and coming, well, already established um, subdivision that has been doing really well. So, you know, a lot of persons are investing in things like that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And let, let me tell you, Jamaica is just a fantastic, it's a fantastic island. Love the island. Every time I, I come home is what I call it now. It just brightens my spirit. I love the people, the culture, mm -hmm. the food, and the golf. 
golf, <laughs> the golf courses are, are exceptional. You know, it's wonderful there. Okay, where did you play golf when you was here recently? Absolutely, sir. Absolutely. Where, I've been where, coming to Jamaica where? for the last okay. 10 years. And, Have you um, ever tried the golf course in Mandeville? We actually bring down a group of 30 people, 30 men who come oh. down, men and women, and we play at Cinnamon Hill. We play at White Witch. We played at Trial. You know, um, we've even gone up to Caymanis. Recently, I was in Mandeville. I tried to uh, play around uh, at the the Mandeville golf course there, but I, I, was, I wasn't able to uh, due to time constraints and business. Oh, okay. Because I only know that one, you know. So I was wondering <laughs> if you played at that one, you know. I'm sorry. Could you repeat that for me? No, no. I said I only know the golf course in Mandeville. So I was yeah. wondering if you went to that one, you know. No, I, I wanted to. Um, I was actually at the Golf View Hotel, and every morning I woke up and I looked across and I saw some people playing, and I was like, "Why, moi, lick two balls today?" No, but <laughs> business come first. <laughs> the managing director said to me, "Excuse me, sir, we need you in the office. Yeah, um, please get yourself here." So you know, <laughs> but I'm sure I'll have ample time to do that. I'll have ample time to play golf in Jamaica because I I currently spend about six months in Jamaica, back and forth, back and forth. Oh, wow. You know? When you look at all everything together. All right. So, Joseph, one more question before you leave us. And I want to ask, where do you see real estate in the next five years before we wrap it up? Sorry, one more time. Where, where do, do you I see real estate going in the next five years? That is a fantastic question. And I'm glad you asked. As we look at the implementation of the the mls services mm -hmm. as we look at we you know the digital age mm -hmm. um we look at the diaspora bridge bringing back home our people we look at uh, the highways being put in place for yeah. ease of access and transportation you know as we look at and examine the developments, subdivisions, north coast, in the center of the island, on the south coast. When we look at things like that, um, you can only see the real estate market going upwards. The, it's going, there is a big boom that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, a, lot of, a lot of North Americans are taking some of their equity here in Canada and bringing it to Jamaica. Uh, and the reason being, well, you know what, for... 350,000 US or 500,000 US, they can buy a fantastic property, you know, a second home in the Caribbean with the advent of Airbnb and being able to rent out your, your vacation home while you're not using it and generate mm -hmm. revenue. Mm -hmm. um, that lends itself to another stream of individuals and sun worshippers and diaspora coming back home and understanding that, you know, they can own a piece of Jamaica they can. and still own their property in the UK or in North America at they can have a it fraction all. of the cost. Yeah, yeah. In Canada, in, in, in Canada, five hundred thousand dollars gets you a uh, a one bedroom uh, a one bedroom six hundred and fifty square foot condo or condominium or what you would refer to as a strata. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, so, you know, the better investment would be, well, what if, what if I took that money and I placed it in Jamaica? Well, now I can Airbnb that and I have, I'm gaining revenue. Mm -hmm. It's appreciating mm -hmm. and I have access to it to use it anytime I choose mm -hmm. or my friends or family. Yeah. You know, so you put all hey, those Joseph, components do you offer service? in, in a pot do you offer and service? it up. You're going to see a fantastic real estate marketing taking place, you know? Um, and I think uh, a lot of the locals will be involved as well, you know, because as they as the interior opens up and as uh, businesses now relocate to the interior, you'll see that uh, the local buyers will address it as where do I want to work, live yeah. and play, you know, uh, work, live and play are important components to deciding where you want to live and uh, what environment you want to live in. Yeah. So, so Joseph, Joshua, Joshua, as we look yeah. down the road. Yeah. Sorry, Can you hear me? Joshua was saying something. Yeah. Go ahead, Joshua. Yeah. I was wondering if somebody have, you know, property, you know, like a home or a condo and they want to Airbnb, do you offer a service to assist people in getting that prepared and ready? 
Okay, so that's addressing the, the short-term rental market. Yes, we do. We do have ancillary services that will address short-term rentals. We've set up a, a separate division to do that just so that, you know, we have relationships with the owners of those property and we want we want that arm to manage it specifically so that it doesn't really, even though it is real estate, um, until the laws, the real estate laws and the real estate board agree that, you know what, real estate agents can now do short-term rentals, mm -hmm. then we'll take it under our umbrella. As such, we leave it uh, as a separate entity and a separate company by itself with individuals okay. who's, who are subject matter experts in the Airbnb market. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, and how, if people want to get in touch with you, how can they? Well, to get in touch with our wonderful team, so Allied Real Estate Office, in uh, Jamaica is one eight seven six six two five three eight three six. If you are part of the diaspora, then um, and you're located in Canada, you can reach our Canadian office at nine zero five nine one three 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 one. And of course, everybody has uh, everybody already has uh, Nordia's number from IDS. Mm -hmm. If uh, they need additional services in order mm -hmm. to assist them with uh, anything required for the, the purchase and sale or identity passports mm -hmm. and so on yeah. for Jamaica. Okay. All right, there you have awesome. it, everyone. Thank you so much for coming, Joseph. It was a pleasure speaking with you. And I know that a lot of persons really enjoyed this session because they must have learned a lot. So thank you so much for coming. And I hope you can join us another time. I would love to thank you so much for inviting me. And uh, <laughs> thank you, the Joseph. famous words of the managing director, blessings and honor. Blessings and honor. Blessings and mm -hmm. honor, Joseph. <laughs> all right. Take all right. care. All good. Awesome. Take care. Awesome. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you, Davita and Joseph and Allied for that connection. You know, a part of the Diaspora Connection, you know, segment is to really give value added resources to the community. So, you know, real estate is a very big topic these days. You know, people have their assets and they want to take advantage of them and um, use them for their benefit. You know, especially, you know, the subdivision. People have a whole lot of land and they want to know, does it make sense to subdivide and to sell? So, sounds like Joseph might be able to help them with those types of uh, decisions. Yes, he can. <laughs> yeah, man. All right. I know we're heading to a break, you know what I mean? But we'll just play this one from Vady Vady. We cherish life all through the rough And when it comes, them don't know themselves until them Get caught up, caught up in the ways of this world From a band, have to cherish life all through the rough And when it comes, them don't know themselves until them Get caught up, caught up in the ways of this world In it, win it, so anytime you gon' bring it Put your heart, mind, soul, put your everything in it Don't you give up in a minute or unable to finish Cause when we start it, it should be never ending In baby, baby, tell you never give up on your moves Never put your foot up in an next man's shoes And it can't fit you Borderless Connections, our culture amplified The, the Bridge, Bridge 99, 99 FM. FM This is Romain Virgo and you're locked into The Bridge 99 FM Your Caribbean vibes amplified, easy Okay yeah, welcome again forward to Diaspora Connection featuring Kabbalah for Jamaicans. I know when I say diaspora, I know exactly what I'm talking about, you know. But when I say Kabbalah, do you know what I'm talking about? Most people don't, you know. So Joshua is in New York, you know. And he's the Kabbalah teacher, you know. And um, he's going to be telling you much about what Kabbalah is all about. And Joshua, are you there? Yes, sir. I'm here. All right. So good tunes, man. You play some good tunes, man. Thank you. Yeah, man. You in Jamaica do good, good, good music. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, what we need now is some music with lyrics that will help people understand these teachings. Because you've heard me say before that there is no other musical genre 
okay, other than reggae music that speaks so much about God and the Creator and those types of, you know, subjects, right? And it's not considered gospel, right? Even though gospel music is really only music that um, is referring to to Jesus, you know, that's the, that's the genre. Yeah. But reggae music, I mean, I grew up on that, and I tell you, I never hear any music talk more than the Creator, you know, than than that. So yeah, it's not yeah, man. it's not considered gospel. The name gospel, and that's but okay. You know what gospel mm-hmm. means, which is good news. It don't know the mm-hmm. reggae music has been considered just that. You know what I mean? But Absolutely. sometimes some little names and things cause differences. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it shouldn't really be yeah. because it's just for us to be educated enough to know. You know what I mean? What certain mm-hmm. things mean and stuff and stuff like that, you know right. what I mean? So, so, so words Kabbalah, matter. Kabbalah is another word that, you know, some people hear and they don't really know right. what that is, you know, so probably, right. you know, I know, I know you're probably not going to, you didn't want to talk about like just this, but for those who never listened before and never hear the word Kabbalah, I mean, could you just identify that in a short time yeah, before sure, you get absolutely. into your teachings? Yeah, man. So the word Kabbalah is a hebrew word that means to receive okay so then the question the next question would be to receive what it is the wisdom and the knowledge to receive the light force of the creator what is the light force of the creator kabbalah teaches that you know we don't use the term god a lot right we do but we prefer the word creator because (laughs) <laughs> Kabbalah teaches that God has many names, okay? And even from the Old Testament, a name denotes a nature, okay? So when we say that God has a lot of names, it means that he has a lot of different attributes. Each one of his names describes a particular attribute. For instance, El Shaddai, okay? Many of you are f- might be familiar with this term. It means the motherly God, the God that is ever so comforting, ever so forgiving, um, you know, right? El Shaddai. Then there is um, (laughs) Adoni, right? That is the phrase, it means Lord, okay? And it really refers to the physical world known as Malhut. Um, so again, Kabbalah is the wisdom of how to receive the light force of the Creator. Because if you don't know how to receive the light, then you cannot manifest it. It's like um, someone who goes to the river with a bag to collect the water. Uh, they're able to fill the bag with water, but the bag has holes. So by the time they reach where they want to get to, all the water run out, okay? So similarly to us, we're able, many of us are able to make a connection to the light force because of our goodness, yeah? And the things that we do for others and the way that we um, mirror the creator. But then we also engage in actions that help us to lose it or cause us to lose it prematurely so the study of kabbalah is not only how to draw the light force of the creator but how to keep it and how to protect yourself against negative forces because if it's one thing i learned i've been studying this for the last four, uh, 14 years and if it's one thing i learn is that <laughs> The majority of the, wi- not majority, a good portion of the wisdom is given to us to teach us how to protect ourselves from negativity. And what I want to share with you all now is, you know, some of the foundational teachings because, you know, it's difficult to, to, um, to teach this type of wisdom in this type of format, yeah? In that, um, I don't know who's out there listening. I don't know who heard me last week. So it's difficult for me to build on concepts uh, from the previous week. So I'm, you know, I'll have to repeat myself a lot. And that's okay. I don't mind doing that because, believe it or not, repetition is the key. Hearing it over and over and over again 
like I've had to hear it over and over and over again for the last 14 years is important. So I don't mind, you know, repeating myself. So again, the word Kabbalah means to receive. To receive what? To receive the light force of the Creator. Kabbalah teaches that God or the creative force, okay, is an infinite source of giving. Infinite source of giving. Now, our job is to build a proper vessel so that we can harness that light. I like to give the analogy. Um, it's a sports analogy, um, the game of baseball. Um, I know baseball is not a common sport in Jamaica, but people have TV and watch baseball all around the world. So there are several different positions that have a different glove, right? A different glove. The first baseman have a different shaped glove. The catcher has a different shaped glove. And the shortstop, okay, has a different shaped glove. Why? Because of their function, right? Each glove is formed so that that function can operate effectively. The catcher's glove is much more padded because he's the one who have to receive the 90, oh, 90 miles an hour ball that's coming from the pitcher, right? The first baseman, theme glove, have a, a, a longer lip on it, as it were, to kind of funnel the ball in because he's always stretching because I'm a tried to person at first base, yeah? So that's an analogy of the vessel. So we have to know what gr vessel to create, right? To be able to harness, to receive and harness the light force of the creator. So that is why we learn. That is why we study. Because we need to understand how to interface with these energy forces. Because that's all it is. Again, the creator, or God as it were, is an infinite source of giving. And we are vessels and it is our job to receive that light and to manifest it here in the world. Now, another key uh, point of the teachings is the study of what is called the Tree of Life. And the Tree of Life is, you know, for those of you who um, are watching us streaming, yeah, and of course it's going to be difficult for you guys to to be able to um, to see this if you're just listening to the radio. Um, I'm putting something up on the screen here so that you can see those red circles. Yeah? Those, that is an example or a diagram of the 10 spherot. The 10 spheres of energy. Almost like chakras. For those of you who, you know, know about energy in the body, there are seven main energy centers and they're called chakras and they um, exist along our spinal cord at different levels different elevations and each one um, emits a particular energy and helps us to harness certain energies and emotions similarly with you know the light force of the creator um, it comes down to us um, in a you know, very pure form, and as it um, as it travels down, okay, the tree of life. Each stage, it reduces. It gets reduced. It gets reduced ten levels to be able to be manifested in the world of Malhut. This is the world that we're living in, Earth okay is the tenth level in the tree of life it is the lowest level it is the realm of physicality and this is why you hear us say that kabbalah is not a religion it is a science it is spiritual science and just like you know in the natural world you have biology you have physics there are certain laws that have been found to be immutable, such as the law of gravity, okay? 
there is a periodic table yeah, that has identified the various elements in the world, the basic building blocks of physical creation. Well, there is a periodic table, as it were, in Kabbalah as well. That is known as the 22 Hebrew letters. Okay, just like how there are four strands of DNA in, in physicality, science has identified that, right? Four strands of DNA. They are 22 elements known as the 22 Hebrew letters from Aleph to Taf. There are 22 of them. And each one of these are an energy force. And Kabbalah teaches that before the Creator created anything, He created the 22 Hebrew letters. And from those 22 letters, He created all of creation. Okay? So, really and truly, if it's one thing I would love to awaken appreciation in all of you, is appreciation for the Hebrew alphabet, for the Hebrew letters. Because, you know, Hebrew is the original language. We were all speaking Hebrew before the Tower of Babel, which you can find in Genesis, where the Creator had to, you know, confuse our languages so that we would not be able to devise evil together, because that's what had happened back then. Everybody was unified, yeah? But they were unified in their evil. They were unified in their desire to receive for the self alone. Everybody was of one accord, saying, yes, for me, and for me alone. And, even, and one of the things that, you know, Kabbalah and the Torah teaches is that from that story alone, that unity, <laughs> imagine, if the Creator could not, if the Creator could not um, stop man from completing the evil that they were trying, okay? If he could not do that, we'll put it this way. The only way he could have stopped them was confusing the language so that we couldn't communicate with one another. And what does that tell us? Because remember, you know, the Creator gave us free will. And we have to understand that the Creator is not an Indian giver. In other words, you're not going to give us something and take it back. However, there are consequences for our actions. He gave us free will and he also said, guys and girls, this is how the story is set. This is how the thing program. This is how the world works. And how did he tell us that? He told us that through the laws, or I should say, the knowledge, okay, that he gave Moses on Mount Sinai. That's not the only knowledge that was received because Abraham received knowledge as well. Adam received knowledge. Yeah? All the patriarchs received knowledge. However, what Moses received on Mount Sinai, we as Christians know it as the Ten Commandments, but they were actually 613. Okay? Even though there were seven from Noah, it's called the Noahide Laws, right? There were over 611, sorry, 606, right, mitzvot. And those mitzvot are both positive and negative things that we can do or should not do to connect us to the light force of the Creator. Right? So the Creator gave us the blueprint of how the universe is established. And that was all written down in the Torah. Now, let me explain something else. When you hear me say Torah, I am referring to the Old Testament. And the Old Testament only. Okay? Because the Torah does not include the New Testament. In fact, most people recognize the Torah as only being the first five books of Moses. And that is not completely accurate at all. 
Why is that not accurate? Because, as we know, the Old Testament is Genesis to Malachi. Yeah? And Kabbalah, let me just share with you, and I've, you know, those of you who have been with us from the beginning have heard me talk about the Zohar. Right? The Zohar is the primary text of Kabbalah. This red volume is what we study from because it has both English and Hebrew in it. Okay, and this is what we study from. But the Zohar itself is written in pure Aramaic. And it has been translated for us by the Kabbalah Center. God bless them. Um, for us to study from. Okay. People may ask, where did the Zohar come from? Well, the Zohar was revealed because it is come from the Creator, right? All, all wisdom comes from the Creator. It was revealed by the sage Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, right, in the second century. In fact, I've heard stories where they say that, um, you know, Rabbi Shimon was a contemporary of Jesus, right? Um, <laughs> In fact, Rabbi Shimon told Jesus, be very careful, my friend, my young friend, because you're going to get yourself killed. All right? Jesus was a rebel. All right? He came to shake things up, to shake up the establishment and to reveal certain secrets to people for those who could hear it. Because remember, Jesus spoke primarily in parables. Why? Why did he speak in parables? He spoke in parables because... The people, majority of the people, couldn't understand the high wisdom that he shared with his close disciples. So he spoke in the form of stories. And I'm going to share with you a story that will hopefully help you to understand the purpose and the origin of what is known as the evil inclination. And the evil inclination is that force, that dark force. We call, many of us call him the devil. Kabbalah calls him the Satan. And it literally means the accuser. Okay? Because he is set up. That force was a force that was created by God, by the creator. Okay? To fulfill a specific purpose. So let me read to you this story which is out of the Zohar. And before I go on, so what is the significance of the Zohar? Because Kabbalah teaches that without the Zohar, we would not be able to fully understand the Torah. Not just we wouldn't be able to understand it, but we would not be able to glean the wisdom from it. Okay? So hence we use the Zohar to help us to understand and uncover the secrets in the Torah. So this particular um, story is out of the portion named Truma. So also let me explain that the Zohar takes the Torah and helps and explains the Torah. Not every word out of the Torah, certain concepts and certain um, passages, it will help us to understand and give us more clarity. And this particular um, story is out of the portion known as Truma, which is Exodus chapter 25 through 27. And this is really the purpose of the evil inclination. It goes on to say, Here is a secret of those who know judgment. For everything that the Holy One, blessed be He, and that's how we consider, that's one of the names that we use and to describe the Creator or God, the Holy One, right? But it means a specific level of that energy but suffice it for now it refers to God for everything that the Holy One blessed be he made above and below is all to show his honor and everything is for his service now it says who saw a servant go against his master whatever is the will of that person's master he becomes known as an insider 
if he does not do the will of his master. Okay, so the person who does not do the will of his master is called an insider. All right. It goes on to say that the will of the Holy One, blessed be he, is that people should be constantly in his service and that they should go in the true path in order to merit much good. Right? The Creator wants good for us. So he laid out a path for us. He told us, you go this way, it will be good for you. You go that way, it won't be good for you. Right? Okay, he continues. Since this is the will of the Holy One, blessed be he, how could an evil servant come and incite against the will of his master and turn people to the evil path? How can he thrust them from the good path and cause them not to do the will of their master and to turn people to the evil path? In other words, how can that be? How can there be a force that we've known as the devil or the Satan? How can there be a force that is enticing man to do something other than what God wants him to do, right? And that's why we have these myths and these fables that <laughs> that's this, the dark force or the Satan or the devil is operating against God's will. It can't happen because this same force was created by God. Let me continue. He answers, certainly he is doing the will of his master. It is like a king who had an only son, and he loved him exceedingly. He commanded him to love, he commanded him with love not to go close to any evil women, because anyone who approaches an evil woman would not be worthy to enter the king's palace. The son promised that he would lovingly do the will of his father okay great verse 6 7 excuse me verse 674 in the same portion of Tuma. outside of the king's palace was a harlot who was a very beautiful was very beautiful to behold after a few days the king said i want to see my son's wishes toward me so he called the harlot and he told her basically he hired the harlot he said go and entice my son in order to test the wishes of my son towards me. And what did the harlot do? She went after the king's son and started to embrace him and kiss him and entice him with all kinds of enticements. If that son is proper and observes the commandments of his father, then he will scold her and tell her, push her away and not listen to her insights. Then the father would be rejoice with his son and bring him into the inner sanctum of his palace and give him all the presents and all the gifts fit of that honor. Right? That's all. If he refuses the embrace of the harlot or the evil one, then the, the father would be happy and then give him all that a prince deserves. So they ask, who caused all this honor for the son? Right? And he says, we must say it was the harlot who did that. He questions, does that harlot deserve praise for this or not? And he says, certainly she deserves praise from all aspects, for she did the co king's command, and she brought that son all the good because of his actions, right? Because he proved through his actions, the son proved to the king that he was worthy. So who should get the credit for that? The harlot. Right? And it goes on to say that it was the harlot who brought all that good to the son. Therefore, it is written, and this is from Genesis chapter 1, verse 31, and behold, it was very good. It's talking about the creation. And this is a hint, this is a secret of where the evil inclination or the Satan or that force, that dark force was created. And if you go back to Genesis 1 and it talks about how the second day was very good, because he was created on the second day. And it says here, And behold, it was good. Right? If you go back and read Genesis 1, it talks about the day one, how it was very good. That is referring to the angel of life, the good inclination. While very, as in 
it was very good, which is the second day, refers to the angel of death, which is the evil inclination, who is certainly very good for he who fulfills the commandment of his master. Because when he refuses to listen to the voice of that inciter, right, or the dark force, then the king, which is God, the creator, is happy with us. So when you really check it, the Satan or the dark force no, what, that we know as the devil, right? And I, you're not going to hear me use the term devil anymore because it's not a, it's not a part of the Kabbalistic vocabulary. We use the term the Satan. And it means the accuser. And that is why he was designed. He was designed to accuse man, right? That when he doesn't do well, judgment comes forth. Because, look, we all have to live according to the spiritual system. And the Creator has set that all out in the Torah and further revealed in the Zohar. Further revealed in the Zohar. So, again... I say that to help people to understand that this is the nature of the spiritual system. There is a force that was created by the cause of all causes. And that force was put here to challenge us and to be a thorn in our side when we do not do the right thing. Because what else will cause us to do the right thing other than when we go through pain and suffering or when we go through chaos? When everything is okay, you know, when everything is running well, you know, we never check ourselves. Never stop to say, well, am I living the way I should? Um, it's important, very important for us to understand because, again, one of the things that I've noticed since studying Kabbalah is a lot of the prayers that we've been given and we're taught and the wisdom is to teach us how to protect ourselves from this dark force. Why is it necessary? Because we're always misstepping. In fact, when the Creator went to create, wanted to create man, it says that he looked into the Torah. What does that mean? And there's a conversation in the Zohar where it says that the angels came to the Creator and asked him, why are you going to create man? Because if you create man, he's going to sin. We know that. And you're going to have to punish him. And the Creator said, don't worry. I am not called long-suffering for no reason. In fact, the Creator says, I have created the process known as tshuva, which is repentance. Tshuva is a Hebrew word. I have created the method known as repentance so that when man falls, not if, okay? Not if, but when man falls, he will have a pathway to redeem himself and to become pure. Right? So this is what the Creator said to the angels. And he also said to the Torah, he said, look, you and I, meaning the Torah, the words of wisdom he laid out for us, right? The Creator said, you and I are going to help man. And that is why the Torah was given, friends. And somebody may ask, how is it possible that him could look into the Torah when the Torah wasn't written yet? Very good question. And the answer is, we're not talking about the written Torah. We're talking about the spiritual Torah, the Torah that was designed, not the five books of Moses, or not Genesis through Malachi, not even the Zohar, not even the words that are in the Zohar, but the essence, the truth, the energy of life and living, okay, was established and the way 
to get back to a place of purity after we have fallen. All of that was laid out before anything physical was created. Those are the teachings of Kabbalah. So Simba, when you ask me to <laughs> tell people what Kabbalah is all about, you wasn't expecting that, right? But that indeed is an introduction to this study because what we are learning here is knowledge okay knowledge you have to apply it as wisdom because i can tell you all the secrets in the world but if you don't know how to put them together then it doesn't matter so in truth this study the study of kabbalah the kabbalah for jamaican segment is designed to reveal these secrets to Jamaicans so that they can start to incorporate it in their lives so that they can be more successful healthier better relationships and manifesting and connecting to their true purpose in life because I tell you and I've spoken about this in previous segments and you know in fact this is segment number seven this is our seventh show and the key is understanding that unfortunately this is a big game it's called the game of life and for those of you who are who play sports or used to play sports or is very fond of sports you know that the elation well there is no elation or joy when an extremely strong team destroys an extremely weak team, right? There is no joy in that for the team who wins. However, you put equally matched opponents or even an opponent that is statistically should win, right? Appears stronger on paper. And when that other team beats that bigger team, my goodness, can you imagine the feeling that that smaller team or younger team or the team that was considered the underdog think about the elation that they feel so it is with us my friends so it is with us the satan the dark force is our adversary he is our match okay he is the match that the creator put out there to challenge us yes to accuse us when we do not do the right thing because guess what the Creator is an infinite source of love and giving. The Creator doesn't punish. The Creator does not punish. Let me repeat it. The Creator does not punish nor judge. Because He knows the end from the beginning. He knows how this whole thing is going to end. It's only we are the ones that are in the dark. We are the ones who have uncertainty as how this whole thing is going to end up. But you know what? He told us. He told us that at the end, death is going to die. It will be an end of death. And there will be an end to the evil inclination. But we're not there yet. We're not there yet. And the teachings of Kabbalah are here to help us get there and to reduce the chaos in our life. Yeah? All right. So, yeah, it's quite interesting, Joshua. Mm -hmm. So the Creator don't don't punish our judge you know no, we, he does we, not we like to get points you know what i mean so we're gonna go back to that when we come back from this break all right all right cool black bridge to the george washington bridge from the top of the empire state building to the blue mountain peak from the grill point to morant point to brooklyn bronx queens manhattan new york city Yeah, man, so welcome forward to Diaspora Connection featuring Kabbalah for Jamaicans, you know. And we're in with Joshua over there in New York. And, you know, me and David are right here in the Bridge 99 studios yes, here in are. Kingston, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, man, beautiful Kingston. Did you ever go over Devon House and see over the nice? Yeah, over there is really nice. And what it's I love about... Yeah, man, and what... Well, crowd, but what I love about Devon House is that... 
I have a daughter, two year old. They have a playground that is right beside the ice cream parlor. A lot of people don't know. And I think you pay like six hundred dollars, and they get a free, a free ice cream cone. A child and you and the child can go in and play the swing song, the seesaw, and uh, all different you know things. So it's really a nice place to be. Yeah, man. So Kingston have good things about it, and in you know, a Bridge FM have good things too. You know what I mean? Because we have Kabbalah for Jamaicans and Joshua. You're talking yeah. about um. You know, the creator doesn't judge nor punish. Yeah. I want, mm-hmm. We don't have a lot of time left, but I want you to just quickly explain that you know, in, in a short way. You know? Well, I'm not saying that punishment don't exist. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm just saying it's not the creator do it because... It's not the creator do it. No. You see, the creator made creation. He made the universe and all the laws therein. And then he took a step back. Okay? So whatever punishment we are getting or we experience, okay? Mm-hmm. It is the forces of cause and effect at play. Like you mentioned earlier. Cause and effect. So what the creator did was he designed creation the way he did, right? He gave mankind the manual book on it, which is the Torah, and then he took a step back. Because, in fact, when it says that God rested in the seventh day, that's what happened. He took a step back. And he said, okay, now it's your turn. Mankind, it's your turn now to set things right. Because guess what? Contrary to popular understanding, the creation wasn't finished. All right? We, he created mankind to complete the creation. And until people begin to understand that this is our purpose in life, we'll never get there. And that is why there is a circular amount of chaos that is going on. Look at what's going on in the world. So it's a cause and effect. Cause and effect. So how do you explain that? How do you you explain cause and effect? Yeah. Well, the good that you do comes back to you and the bad that you do comes back to you too. Very simple. So it's important to continually do good, right? Yeah, but what does it mean to do good? Yeah, we can easily say it's, it's important to do good, but on whose, whose yardstick? You know, which, who is saying what is good, right? Now, this is why you have people who believe in the Bible and you have people who don't, right? For me and for the Kabbalists, right, and for a lot of people in this world, they believe that the Bible is the source of good works, Right? That these are the things, if you follow the Bible, right? Whichever one you want to follow, to your understanding, then you're doing, quote unquote, the will of God to whatever your understand, understanding is. Right? So karma is the execution of the principle of karma, cause and effect. Right? So when I say that God doesn't judge, Look, there are statutes and ordinances that are set up in the world. And when we act against them, they are recorded. They are forces. And the main one is the accuser. The main one is the Satan. And he is there that always brings accusation against us. Why? So that we can improve. Because there is a way. Okay? That seems right to man. But it is so far off from the truth. That's why the creator says that his ways are not our ways. So how do we learn his ways? We have to study the Torah. We have to study the Torah and we have to learn the Kabbalah. Because the Torah, as it is written, you can't understand it the right way. Impossible. Impossible. Matter of fact, I'm going to share something with you out of the Zohar. Right? Which, again, I'm reading from... The Red Zohar. This is um, volume number 12, and I'm in the portion known as Tetzaveh, which is um, out of Exodus. Now, this is verse 86 out of the Zohar. The words of Torah become clear. Only, <laughs> I'll take a step back. It's talking about, you know, people ask the question, why was the Torah given in the wilderness? 
Why was it given in the desert? Anybody have asked a question? Why was it given in the desert? Yeah? Here's a reason. The words of Torah become clear only there, meaning in the desert. And the only light is that which comes out of darkness. When this side is subdued, meaning the dark side, the left side, okay, the other side, the Holy One, blessed be He, rises and His glory becomes greater. So when the negative side is subdued, the Heavenly Father, the Creator, His essence and His energy is elevated, right? There is no service of the Holy One, blessed be He, except out of darkness and no good except out of evil when a person enters the evil way and then leaves it the holy one blessed be he rises in glory that is why what happened in the garden the quote unquote sin of man had to happen okay it was all a part of the plan of the creator but it was given to us in story form. This is why when people say that Jesus is God's plan B. No. Absolutely not. Okay? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but shall live eternally. That was set up from the beginning. When the creator said to the Torah, said to the angels, don't worry. I have created repentance. I have created the process by which man can redeem himself and become pure because when he sins, okay, he's going to need it. And this is what the Zohar is saying. He says that overall perfection is good and evil together, rising to the good afterwards. So you, you, you start at a, a place of pristineness, you fall, and you come back, right? That is when the Creator is elevated because you won't know there's no such thing as good without evil. Okay? Good does not exist without the notion of evil. So what the Torah is saying is that there is only, the only good is when good merges with evil. When we, as the, the vessels of the light force, okay, representatives of the creator, when we recognize that a particular behavior or a character trait that is within us, not within somebody else, because again, since God doesn't judge, we mustn't judge. The only time that we must judge or the only thing we must judge is what we are going to do or not do. When you see somebody else do something else, again, you don't know the big picture. So it's hard to say why that person did what they did. The only thing that we should be judging is ourselves for what actions we do and do not do. And before we run out of time, I just want to encourage people that for those of you who are out there who find this wisdom interesting and would like to know more, okay, there are many ways that you can connect with us. One of them is that we have a bookstore in Mandeville. Yeah? And um, I'm going to get you for that, get that number for you shortly. The other, <coughs> the other instance is we, we share a Zoom link, okay, weekly so that people can get um, connected to the Torah readings on Shabbat, on Saturday. These Torah readings are presented by the Kabbalah Center. Um, Kabbalah Center is an international um, organization. I am affiliated. I attend the one in New York. And what we do on our, in our WhatsApp chat group is we send out a link, a Zoom link, where people can look and watch the Torah reading for free. Because if it's one thing that we are admonished to do by the Torah is to wash ourselves in the Torah. We are admonished to listen to the Torah, okay, especially on Shabbat, which is a Saturday. Because when we listen to the Torah, we are being infused with light energy, okay? Light energy that can transform us. So that's another way that we can connect. Twice a week, we have Zohar calls, a 30-minute Zohar call that, again, if you're a part of our WhatsApp group, you can get the link and you can join us. You can hear the beautiful words of Aramaic coming out of the Zohar. And then people will read the English as well. So we have both English and Aramaic readers. And it's 30 minutes, okay? No commentary. We're just reading from the Zohar because we, as students of Kabbalah, believe that 
It's the Zohar. It's the spreading of the Zohar. It's a dissemination of the Zohar. It's the understanding. More people understanding and reading and scanning the Zohar is how the world is going to be rid of chaos. Because you see, if mankind could do it himself, right, it would have been done already. We're not waiting for a man to come. God has told us that he is our salvation. And he also says that there will come a time where man will not have to say to his brother, you know, learn or know God. Because he says that all shall know him. Right? How will all know him? All is going to know him through the study of Kabbalah. Romans 8, 19. All creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Who are the sons of God? The sons of God are those who study the Kabbalah. And you can find that in Behar, which is volume 16, in the portion of the secret of the servant and the secret of the son. The creator lays out, the Zohar lays out and defines who the son of God is or who the sons of God are because it's not just one. All right? Not just one. So let me give you the number for our bookstore in Mandeville. That number is 876-563-8893. Again, 876-563-8893. And as for Patrice, and he's got tons of books over there. We've got Zohars over there. We have everything to get you started in the study and I tell you my friends this is a self-study okay this is a self-study because you know there are some that say that we can't save ourselves that's not true the way we save ourselves is through the wisdom of the Creator right now we're not doing it it's the wisdom and the understanding that's doing it God is the one who's really doing it because God he himself said that he alone is our Savior right he alone is our Savior so it's important for us to connect to the Torah if we want to connect to the Creator's wisdom and knowledge we connect to the Torah which is Old Testament and we connect to the Zohar I'm not saying there is no wisdom or truth in the New Testament don't get me wrong I'm not saying that at all what I am saying is that if there's anything in the New Testament that is not 100% in alignment with the old, it must be questioned. All right, so Joshua, so yes, sir. you know the Old Testament, so, so you can say Kabbalah is like about the Old Testament, right? You can, can you say that? Because you know, say that again, I'm sorry. You can say Kabbalah is about the Old Testament or is the Old Testament. Can you no, say that? Not, it's, can no, you say that? No, Kabbalah is not the Old Testament. Okay, Kabbalah uh, is the study. Again, it, it it uses it's it's the wisdom and understanding of what was given to us in the Old Testament. I'll all right. So, way. for someone who never heard about Kabbalah, but they have been studying the Old Testament for years, um, is there any salvation in that? I wouldn't use the word salvation. I know I know what you're getting, <laughs> but I'm very careful what, what what words I use. Right. Is there any benefit in that? Absolutely. If a person is well-versed in the Old Testament, okay? But still, because remember I said that the Torah, as it is given, as it is written, is not completely understandable. We need the Zohar to be able to really uncover what the Torah is trying to tell us. So if a person is well-versed in the Old Testament and know the Old Testament, that's good, right? But that alone is not going to make when, them understand the principles of the concepts of Kabbalah. When was the Zohar established? The Zohar was established, um, it was revealed around the second century, right? Then it went underground and was hidden for over 1,500 years. So before it was revealed, um, um, was, wasn't there anything that could have given man that way of life that they needed? Yeah, it's called the Oral Torah, but it wasn't written down. You see, the Zohar is the Oral Torah that was written down. It was given to Moses, so the wisdom was there. But it wasn't written down for the masses to be able to get. Yeah? So that's, that's what's happening. So now, this is why this is so powerful. 
because now it's being disseminated or made available for the masses. So anybody who connects to this, like I said, there is a, you know, look at the, the modern day Israelite or Jew, right? All around the world. What makes them so successful is because they have aligned themselves to this wisdom and this knowledge. Not all of it, right? But to show you how powerful this wisdom is and this knowledge is, is that if you connect to it, even just a little bit, you're going to get benefit. All and right. that's what we're here trying to give to Jamaicans All and right. people of so color. Currently celebrating Purim. And um, after Purim, what else comes up? Because, you know, Passover. There, are people, there are people who they can just, they would just like to just get connected. You know what I mean? So you talk about yes. Passover. When is that coming up? Passover is coming up in April. Matter of fact, it begins sat Friday night, April 17th. This Friday. I think it's the 17th okay. or the 16th. Right. And for a week, for seven days. Okay, so we have and some time. We're going to talk more about that as we go along. We have some time for, you know, get people engaged so they yeah, can man, actually sure. get on something, you know what I mean? Because some people some people like to be practical, you know what I mean? Because and if it's not something bad, then people no. will probably just do it or just try it, you know? So we yeah. definitely do Providing, that. Providing, yeah, absolutely. Mm. I wish we absolutely. did talk about Purim last week and get people engaged into the act, some of the activities. <laughs> But that didn't happen, but, you know. No, you know, and you know what? Um, there's so much to share, right? But I'm trying to help people to understand some of the basics. Yeah, and that is the appreciation for the Hebrew letters, understanding the importance of the Zohar and the Torah, right? And again, today we learned about the evil inclination, that it was given to us by God himself, okay? But he also gave us tools and taught us how to combat it. So next week, we'll go a little bit more into, you know, the tools that we can use to combat this evil inclination and, um, and purify ourselves. And again, let me just give my number. It's 516-965-5700. Again, area code 516-965-5700. Send me a text. We can add you to our WhatsApp group and we can share more of these links and these tools for uh, you right. to help transform your life. All right, cool. David, any final yes, words? Yes, and final word for me. If anyone wants to reach in contact with me in relation to real estate, you can call me at 876-504-3883. If anything you need help with anything for real estate, you can call me at 876-504-3883. Have a good Sunday, everyone. Yeah, man, I'm going to Thanks, Davita. My final word for today is that, you know, he that love it not, know it not, the most I yeah, because the most I yeah is love, you know, our God. God is love. So just keep love right That's through, you right. know what I mean? Blessed Sunday is the first day of spring. So just make That's your right. light shine, all right, man? I'm big up all Thank the farmers you, out there. Blessed love. I'm just going to some farming and get prepared <laughs> for the Gideon, all right? That's right. <laughs> Look around the world today, oh God, and you will see.